my name is Steve and welcome back to my shop and part four of my squareness comparator build in this part I'm going to disassemble the comparator I'm going to finish up the machining I've got a lot of work to do so let's get started Okay, first I'm going to put this in the chuck, just clamp it, tighten the knob in, I'll turn it around and that is jaw number one and I've got my marks so I'll line them up with jaw number one. That's how I turn the piece. 
That should be running pretty accurate. Looks pretty good. And I ground a radius tool to the form tool. I just add a piece of high speed steel and I'm going to use that to rough it out. I think that's a hardened piece of steel. I may have to go to plan B on this one. Let me check it and I'll get back to you. Well, for what it's worth, here is my number 65 file, the hardness testing file, and that skids right off of it. So we got one hard piece of steel there. Uh, let me figure out what I'm going to do next. I decided to try a carbide tool on it and see if I could at least get a bevel on it to get started. So let's give it a shot. pretty good. I've got to see if I can zoom in on it a little bit further. I've got a decent bevel on it. So I've got a carbide tool that's got a radius. It's not exactly the radius that I want. But I can use it to round off those edges and get a pretty good start getting my rounded end. So let's give that a try. Use the spring just to hold tension on the knob so that it uh, will stay where I put it. Okay, it's entered. Feels good. can't move side to side because it's in the slot. It's got a nice smooth action to it. Okay, to the next step. The next piece that I have to build is the foot that will go into this slot. Uh, we'll call it the shoe and it has a radius on it to go up against the standard or the whatever item that you're checking the squareness on. The thickness of it has got to be one eighth of an inch. And so I'm going to start out with this piece of stress proof that I've got because I can harden it. I'm going to face it. I'm going to bevel it so that I have a, a narrower edge and then I'm going to cut the uh, the thickness of it down to an eighth of an inch 
and square off the back of it so that it'll slide into the slot. So let's go back over to the lathe and start cutting. And now I'm going to cut a bevel on it. Now I'm going to part it off just over an eighth of an inch. So it'll give me a little bit of uh, a grind allowance on it. far as I can go. Just got a tiny bit left. Oh, that'll come right off of there. Okay, I'm going to take that off and file the, uh, the nib off of it. I'm pretty happy with the parted finish on that. I just filed off the nibs from turning it and I'm just about 20 thousandths oversized so that'll give me a good grind allowance I'm going to grind this surface the least amount I'll just take a, a good finish cut on it which will make, give me a nice bevel edge and then I'll take the balance off of the back so now I'm going to mark it up and go cut the edge of it off in the uh, milling machine.
350. Since I don't have a heat treating oven, I'm going to be heating it up with the torch. Uh, this is small enough that I can use my MAP propane the torch. It'll get plenty hot. I've got it on a uh, heating heat pad, heat proof pad, and it's supported on a couple of pieces of uh, steel. I'm going to heat it up to a nice salmon red color, and I'm quenching it in some uh, lightweight synthetic motor oil because that's what I've got. Nice salmon pink color, right around 1500 degrees. I preheated the oil so I wouldn't be dumping it into ice cold oil since it was uh, stored outside. It's been a little chilly. I've actually already done a test piece that came out to right around a Rockwell 55 using my uh, files. And that's the, uh, the 55 file and it's skating right off of it. And here's a 60, and the 60 is starting to dig in. So it's right between 55 and 60, which is great. That's about what I wanted. So now it's all ready to uh, surface grind down to final thickness. I've dressed the grinding wheel, and I've got it all set. I took and polished the edge. And now I'm going to take a light grind on the top, then I'll flip it over and grind it to final dimension.
Okay, just touched off on it. Now I'm going to go down at one and a half thousandths. For my final grind, I'm going to go down five tenths. Pretty happy with the finish on that. It looks looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to flip it over and do the back side. going to touch off on it and flatten it out first and then I'll measure it to get my final dimensions. Okay, I'm going to measure it right on here with uh, my depth micrometer. And I am at 141. I want to go down to 125 so I've got 16 thousandths to go
going to check it and see where I'm at. I haven't done a whole lot of precision grinding with this machine yet. I want to make sure where I'm at. Okay, it looks like, let me just measure that again. Okay, it looks like I've got about nine thousandths to go. I'll bring you back when I'm ready to do my final cut. I'm down to five tenths to go, so I'm going to take my last five tenths off and I'm going to go about a ten thousand step over. After letting the shoe cool down, I am within, let's see if I can see that, two tenths. Oh. And it is parallel all across. I checked it in all places. So I'm, that's what I was shooting for. I'm within two tenths all the way across. I'm pretty happy with the way that the uh, the grinder came across. Let's see if we can see that or not. Okay, after I ground this, I went over it with one of my precision ground stones and just knocked the little uh, burr off the edge of it that the grinder created, and then I slid it into the the holder and. That worked out absolutely perfect as far as I'm concerned. Now all I have left to do is to uh, drill it on each side for an 832 set screw to hold it in place. And the next operation, and I have been fretting over this for quite a while and to decide what to do with the base whether to put pins in it but there really isn't room to put a pin up here I was talking thinking about putting three carbide pins in it and the other option is to hollow it out and leave a lip around the edge
spiked my height gauge along this line. See where this has got this recessed area. And so you're just sitting up on that edge. And that's pretty much what I decided to do. So I will be hollowing this out. And I'll be leaving about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Across the top there. I'm going to hollow that out. So I'll be setting that up on the milling machine. And to do that, I'm going to put the rotating base back on my milling machine vise. I've never used it since it was new, but this looks like a perfect opportunity to use it so that I can cut these 30 degree angles. So I'm going to set up the vise and we'll come back when I'm ready to start milling. I've got the swivel base mounted on the vise and I trammed the vise in and what I've done is I have marked, scribed a quarter inch in on each edge. It's not a precision measurement so I'm going to machine to the scribed edge except on the nose here and I left a half inch there because I gotta leave enough material in here for the set screws and I don't want that to end up being a weak point and if I were to, to mill it back too far that would become a very weak point in it. So I took the, uh, the nose shoe out and I'm going to mill this approximately an eighth of an inch deep. So let's get started. got the main body all hollowed out now to an eighth of an inch deep. Now I've got to rotate my vise 30 degrees and to finish this edge and then I'll rotate it back the other way to finish that edge. Satisfied with that edge, rotate it the other way and finish it up. I'm pretty happy with that. Looks pretty decent. Got a decent, decent finish on it. Got reasonable, even edge around it. Now that's going to wrap up part four of my squareness comparative build. 
I've got the bottom all hollowed out, so I got a raised edge around it. It's a quarter inch wide around three sides, or and then about a half inch across the nose. We've got the the shoe made, hardened, ground, and that's all ready to the final assembly. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to do a final assembly, make sure that all the parts are fitting correctly and working correctly. And in part five, which will be the final, I'm going to surface grind all of the parts for the squareness comparator. I'll see you in the next video.